YouTube, you know what time it is. It is Super Bowl Sunday. We got the Chiefs and we got the Eagles. So tonight, we're going to be breaking it down. Our favorite props, our favorite parlays, and uh, we're going to break this down to the nitty-gritty YouTube. All right, folks, there you have it. We have Super Bowl Sunday battle between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles. Never thought I'd really say this on the AFC side. You know, I, I need to give them more credit than I do. You know, obviously, both the, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Chiefs are both 16-3, and three, you know, including the postseason. So that's pretty dang good. So uh, this Sunday, we have Super Bowl Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It's being held at State Farm Stadium uh, where the Cardinals play. So it, it should be a, a, a good game. You know, I was saying to myself a week, all week, I said, man, I said the Chiefs and the Eagles. I always had the Eagles kind of on the NFC side. But like I said, um, you know, I really thought it was going to be the Bills year or I really did think the Bengals would go into Orchard Park and get that win and then go into Arrowhead and also get that win. So, you know, we're, we're coming off uh, uh, two teams that I, I think had a pretty, not really easy coast in, into the Super Bowl. But, you know, you, you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, they, they beat the Jags, who are a very up-and-coming team. And then uh, they beat the Bengals, which was, you know, we talked about that earlier. That was very messy and a lot of officiating issues and um, Patrick Mahomes with his ankle and just a lot of issues on that side. When you go to the Eagles, um, you know, they, they went in and did their business against my Giants and blew them out, I think, 38-7 to and then went to San Francisco and blew them out as well, even without a starting quarterback. So you got you got Patrick Mahomes. You know, he's coming off his second MVP. Congratulations, Patrick Mahomes. That was an amazing honor. And you you got two teams who are extremely hot right now. I I think if the Kansas City Chiefs want to win, they got they gotta run the double tight end sets. Um, you know, they've had no great at times and they've had Travis Kelsey. And, you know, they'll, they'll ha they're going to have to utilize weapons they probably have not utilized in the past. Maybe guys like Sky Moore or maybe get Juju involved. I do think Travis Kelsey will be involved, but I don't think he will be the only guy. So, um, you know, I think they can have clock management and maybe try to run the ball and not, and not play uh, hero ball. Uh, like Joe Burrow was trying to do the last game. I think if they play it safe and that's that's how they could poten potentially win, especially these screenplays or something like that, just to protect Patrick Mahomes and, and get it out and just get the short gains. Um, but like I said, on the other side of the coin with the Eagles, you know, the key for them is going to be early defensive dominance like they've done every other game. Um, you know, early defensive dominance, getting the Patrick Mahomes, slowing them down, forcing three and outs, uh, keeping the ball on the ground and in maintaining possession of the ball in game clock. I think that is going to be the most important thing for the Eagles. And I think if they do that, they are going to win. I ne don't necessarily think Jalen Hurts is going to be the X factor here. I think he's going to do a, a job, a great job on the ground. We don't know how he's going to technically throw the ball today, uh, especially with that shoulder issue. But, you know, um, this Eagles team has proved it could be a, a dominant force on the ground th and through the air. So, yes, a couple of weeks ago, you know, especially in the playoffs, Jalen Hurts wasn't able to make those explosive plays. But, you know, I think, um, you know, they're 137-point differential in the second quarter this season, I think, beats any, any team in the NFL history. So, I, I think things like that and getting out and open and really capitalizing and turning uh, forcing turnovers and really uh, getting that second quarter, which they've been so great at, and, and time management, I think that's going to be key. So, um, you know, the Chiefs are more of a one-dimensional team. The Eagles are not. That's just my main reason. Combine that with the Eagles, you know, dominant defense. I got the Eagles here. If you're into the betting side of it or if you... Um, have watched the Lions or not. I believe the Eagles are favored by one and a half right now, which is not a lot. It is not a lot right now. I know the over-under is 51. Um, so so the uh, the odds there are just not, it's not 
uh, a huge margin between uh, the teams. However, um, if you guys really want to know my opinion, I'm just going to give you the nitty gritty. I'm going to put it out on the table right now. Um, I, I love the Kansas City Chiefs. They're the number one team uh, in, in total offense. They have over 400 yards per game. I mean, you got Patty Mahomes. You, you have so many receivers, which has been nice. Uh, not only do you have Travis Kelsey, who's now being talked about as an, an elite tight end, but... You know, losing Tyree Kill really didn't matter. Patrick Mahomes had several options, whether it was Juju Smith-Schuster, MVS. Um, you even got Noah Gray that stepped up. Um, even Sky Moore, rookie drafted. He did a, a little couple of things. They got Kadarius Tony from the Giants. They had Jarek McKinnon step in in the backfield and Pacheco in that backfield. So, I, I mean, listen, this is a lethal offense. I, I think they have a lot going for them, and we've seen that under Andy Reid. Now, uh, on the other side of the coin, I will stick to my gut and say besides the San Francisco 49ers, who in my opinion did absolutely have the best defense in the league this year, especially that uh, linebacking core, got absolutely torched by the Eagles. So what's next up? That's going to be Philly. Um, and I'll say it again. They got, they got the best D-line in the O-line in the game of football. Um, you are talking about a team that, you know, really recorded 70 sacks, uh, which, which was amazing. And an NFL history uh, record, a, a team that doesn't even allow 180 plus yards throughout the air. So, um, you know, this Eagles defense is something that I have not seen in a while. A lot of people will argue that the Eagles, yeah, they had an easy schedule. It's dominant. It's dominant. And it's so dominant that I do not think that I've seen a defense this good and playing this well probably since the Ravens 2000 team. So, you know, when they had the additions of Gardner, when they got that trade from the Saints and they got uh, Hassan Reddick and guys like James uh, Bradbury from the Giants, um, it really has made a difference. And that in combination of A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts elevating his game and being a potential MVP candidate before he got hurt, that makes all the difference in the world. I'm a big fan of Patrick Mahomes. You know, he just won the second MVP. He knows how to get out of pressure. He knows how to make those shuffle passes. And that's what makes Patrick Mahomes so great. Um, but, you know, yes, his ankle will be in, in, a, in a better spot. And we know that he has a high ankle sprain. And this is where I think the Eagles are going to get him. Um, you know, they got Joe Burrow, even when he was sitting in the pocket. And, you know, like I said, this is an Eagles team that's recorded 70 uh, sacks in the in the post in the regular season. And I don't see that slowing down. I do not see Patrick Mahomes, you know, being able to sustain running his butt off the entire game. Um, I, I think he's going to be sacked multiple times. I think it's going to be that D line versus the Chiefs O line. How can they hold up and protect their quarterback? Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. They're sacks this year. I don't think I've seen a team since like the 1985 Bears that have done that. But when you got guys like Hassan Reddick and you got Hargrave and Brandon Graham, I mean, you just have a plethora of just athletes, including Josh Sweat, um, that led the league in a 11%, 12% sack rate this season. So I think that's going to be the difference maker is that defensive line in Patrick Mahomes. I think if he was healthy, I think this would be a different story, but they're going to get to him. They're going to blitz him. Even if they don't, they're going to get to Patrick Mahomes. They're going to make him scramble, and they're going to make him run. So I, I think if Patrick Mahomes, if he's still hurt, that is going to be a problem for him. You know, I, I want to kind of sit here, and uh, I, I want to give the Chiefs some credit. Um, this is a team, you know, that that's won Super Bowls before. I mean, Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes. And we've always talked about how they never had an, a defense. You know, they've always had this stellar offense. So it, it's nice to see the Chiefs, you know, in there, uh, up, up somewhat in, in the defense. Although I will say they are absolutely almost dead last in the red zone. And um, that's one weakness between two teams. You know, I'll, I'll give it to the Chiefs. They're not, they're not too good in the red zone. And also the Eagles are terrible um, in the red zone against top wide receivers, uh, wide out number one and two. So that would be like two deep, uh, two defensive weaknesses. But overall, um, you know, Frank Clark, Chris Jones, Dana, they have done such a wonderful job there in Kansas City. And I've been really, really surprised. Um, I, I think we saw last week when uh, Chris Jones came out and had those sacks and has not 
had any postseason sacks before that. So if they can do that this week and try to stop Jalen Hurts, I think that will be the key. Um, as far as as prop goes and prop betting goes, I, I haven't made too many too many picks. It's a Super Bowl weekend. I'm not going to go crazy. Um, but what I will tell you guys, and let me get out my my notes. Um, let me get out my notes. Um, I like a, co a couple of these props, you know, whether you want to put them together or not. Um, I love the Jalen Hurts anytime scorer. Um, you know, he's shown us all season long that he's a he's a threat in the end zone. He's a he's a threat to be a scorer, and he's also a threat with his legs. So it is plus 100 right now on DraftKings, but I do have him in any time score. Um, I also love his rushing yards, 34 and a half. I know I'm playing it safe, minus 360, but I just didn't really want to go with that 44 and a half. I think he's really averaged anywhere from 30 to 40. Uh, I really do believe, you know, last week, four touchdowns for the Eagles. Jalen Hurts barely had to do anything or throw the ball. Kenny Gainwell, Boston Scott, Miles Sanders, and Jalen Hurts, they did such a great job on the freaking field running the football. So Kenny Gain Gainwell, minus 165, give me over 14 and a half receiving. I think he's going to be heavily involved. Even Boston Scott, over 11 rushing yards. I love it. Minus 120. I think this game, they're, they're going to pound the ground and I think that's really what's going to happen, especially if there's some kind of garbage time. If you want to talk about receiving A.J. Brown, I don't know if he's fully healthy or if he's being used as a pass blocker, but I'm not really hot on him. He hasn't really shown up too much in the postseason, you know, just over 20 yards, uh, you know, nothing crazy. So I'm going to pick Devonta Smith over 49 and a half yards uh, receiving at minus 210. Last year, these two teams played. Um in 2021, and Devontae Smith went off for 122 yards. So I I like this. I like these props. Along with this, I told you guys I do have the under, and I have Eagles money line. So that's what I got for the Eagles. Uh, moving on for the Chiefs. You know, this one, I don't have too, too much on this. Uh, like I said, Kelsey, anytime scorer, I, I think that's it's almost a lock right now, although you never know what he can do. It's minus 115. And if we're going to talk about Travis Kelsey and his postseason career, we are talking him up with Jerry Rice, who is the all-time leading category in, in, in receiving everything pretty much. So if you want to talk about Travis Kelsey, he's had 127, 127 receptions. That's second in the NFL. Okay, that's amazing. Receiving yards, well over 1,400. That's going to put him second on the list. Receiving touchdowns in the in the freaking postseason, he's at 15. That's putting him second on the list. He's had 700-plus games in the postseason. That's going to also put him second on the list. So we're not only, you know, putting Travis Kelsey out there as an anytime scorer. I'm backing it up with facts. And the fact that he's being talked about with Jerry Rice is is something special. So we, we know that Travis Kelsey is probably going to be lined up on the weak side. He's very hard to guard. You know, the size difference. I think he's definitely going to be an X factor here. Uh, moving on, I like Jarek McKinnon. Did not have the biggest role last game, but he's proven time and time again he can be an asset to this uh, Chiefs team, especially in the backfield. I like the over 14 and a half receiving yards for minus 260. Another player I want to watch, guys, Kadarius Tony. Yes, he was hurt last week coming over from the Giants, but if you guys saw that play where it was overturned in the red zone, Kadarius Tony is fast, he can catch. He can know how to run routes. I think he could be a dangerous, dangerous asset to this Chiefs team. And although MVS may be that X factor and may be that guy that will complete catches on third and long and fourth down, I really think that Kadarius Tony will be the guy that get over 14 and a half receiving yards. Moving on, Tommy Townsend. If you don't know who he is, he is a punter for the Chiefs. And, you know, I think this is going to be a defensive battle. I, I think the Chiefs are going to force him to punt and... We're going to take that over three and a half. Uh, moving on, I have a couple of defensive props for the Eagles. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to give three plus Eagles sacks uh, minus 120. We saw what they did last week against the Bengals. However, Jalen Hurts is not Joe Burrow and won't be sitting in the pocket. Uh, Jalen Hurts is a runner. He's mobile and most likely definitely will be leaving the pocket. That's where I kind of have Hassan Reddick coming in and at least getting that one plus sack at minus 160. 
Um, we have some other things, you know, Super Bowl predictions, um, Gatorade colors. If you guys want to look at that, it's gotten completely crazy. The Gatorade odds, um, absolutely nuts. Um, I'm telling you guys, it gets crazy. Yellow, green, plus uh, 375, orange, 425, blue. It's absolutely crazy. Um, but one thing I, I want to bring home, guys, at the end of the day, is that, you know, I, I like both of these teams, and I think they're going to be a, a real force um, offensively, and they both have shown why they should be here this weekend. However, um, you know, this Eagles team is a team that's only la allowed 14 points in two playoff games. Um, you know, they got Nick Sirianni. They have guys that are changing the culture. They have, you know, uh, an elevation of the gameplay and Jalen Hurts, and I really think... Um, you know, they are the most complete team on and off the field. And, you know, even when I was reading about their um, quarterback uh, pressure stats, you know, especially when they're not even blitzing, it was amazing to see that. So I, I think at the end of the day, like I said, the Eagles, I, I don't think they're as good offensively, but I think it's going to get the, be the defense to get this done. So like I said, give me Philadelphia uh, minus one and a half. I like it. Give me the under for the 51 and give me Eagles money line. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to try to make some more covering the NBA and some post NFL Super Bowl. Uh, kind of some recap of that. But um, if you don't know me, my name is Gigi. I, I love the NFL. I love sports. I am a full time content creator. You can also find me on Twitch. So feel free to hit that subscribe button. I would love that, guys. And, uh, Happy Super Bowl Sunday and enjoy the game.